So I've been having a lot of fun dribbling effort into my Feature Flags Playground app, which is a companion piece to my Feature Flags book. And the goal of the playground is to help people better understand Feature Flag targeting and how variants can be allocated against a user base. So you log in by entering your email address. There's no real authentication system. I'm just pre-allocating some data for you. And that pre-allocated data includes a set of feature flags, two different environments, development and production, and most importantly, a whole bunch of demo users, about 106. There's 100 core demo users broken up by various subdomains and flag data and roles. But then I also create six users based on the email address that you use to authenticate. So I logged in with Ben at Ben Adel, and you can see I have now an admin with that email address. And then I have another admin with admin, manager, support, engineer, and analyst. So this gives you a good amount of data against which you can target within your feature flag settings. So let's go back to our overview. Right now, you can see based on the colors that feature flag variants are being allocated across the board. But let's go ahead and remove all the rules here. And you'll see now we're back to a sort of a clean slate where no users are getting anything but the initial variant value. And let's think about how we'd approach product development. So let's go into this reporting feature that we'd be building. And when you come into a feature flag targeting view, what you'll see is the targeting settings on the left. And on the right are the environments. And these little mouse over here are the individual users in our demo user collection. So there's 106 on the left here and 106 on the right. And as we change the rules on the left, we'll see how the allocations change on the right. So when we're developing a feature locally, what we want to do is just enable it for everybody because we're the only user predominantly in our local development environment. So we can come into the development environment, go to the default resolution, change it to true, and hit save. And now you can see that every user in the development environment receives that default resolution, which allocates the true variant, and everyone in production is still receiving the false variant. Now, once the feature has been developed locally and I want to start deploying it to production, we want to be safe about it. We don't want to deploy it to every user at the same time. So probably what we want to do is just deploy it to ourselves first. So we'll add a rule and we know what our email address is. It's the one we authenticated. So user.email is one of ben at bennadel.com and we're going to use the selection resolution and we're just going to change it to true. And now, what you'll see is that nothing actually happened, and that's because there is a rules enabled flag that will short circuit rule evaluation in a given environment. So let's go ahead and turn rules on. And now you'll see my user in the lower right there. And you can tell it's me because if we click into this, we get an explanation page telling why this particular user received this particular variant. So it's for this feature flag. It's the production environment. The variant that was allocated is true, and the reason that was allocated is because there was a matching rule. You can see here the context that's being provided to the feature flag evaluation engine, including my email address, ben at benindale.com, and here's the rule that ended up matching the is one of with the user email address, the selection of two, and because this is a Boolean feature flag, the second variant is almost always the true variant. And so you can use this page to just better understand why something may have connected. So if we go back to the feature, now we want to consider further release. Instead of just releasing to myself and validating that the feature is working in production, maybe we want to go ahead and now release to the entire internal dev team. So we'll add another rule. And this time we're going to use the company subdomain. And we're going to say is one of dev team. And again, we're going to use the selection resolution and change it to true. Now, in addition to just me, all of my dev team, and you can see when I roll over the rule, you can see all of the people who are highlighted on the bottom right there, my entire dev team will receive the true variant in production. Now we've included the dev team, let's broaden the scope of the release. Maybe we want to move on to beta testers. So we'll add another rule and we'll say user.groups.beta tester is one of true. We use the true variant, we'll hit save. And now you can see when I roll over this rule, we get a couple more, maybe six or seven more users included in that release of this feature. So you can see the procession of development. We developed locally, then we started to showcase it in production at first just to ourselves, then to our team, 
then to a group of users who have opted in to trying something new. And at this point, we want to continue to broaden the exposure. And we can do this by changing the default resolution. Instead of it being false for everybody, we can move to a distribution model where we're going to have a percentage of users receive the false variant and a percentage of users receive the true variant. In this case, let's say something like 25% of users will, or uh, no, let's say 75% of users will continue to receive the false and 25% of users will see true. And if we hit save, now, when we mouse over the default resolution, on the right there, you can see that still most people are getting the false variant, but you can see now quite a bit more of that green variant, that true variant. And as we feel confident in our release, we can go ahead and just change this allocation. So maybe we want to move to a 50-50 model. And again, when we mouse over the default resolution, you can see even more green there on the right. And at some point, we're going to be completely confident and we can go back into our default resolution and we can go back to a selection model and we can just say that, okay, in production now, everyone is going to receive true, hit save, and now you can see when we roll over this that everyone on the right is green. Um, there are some there that are not being highlighted because they're being allocated still by the rules. The rules are essentially an opportunity to override the resolution. But at this point, if we went into rules evaluation and we disabled it, you can see now that the entire right-hand side is being affected by the default resolution. So I'm hoping that this helps better illustrate how targeting works with feature flags. And you can come in here and you can just play around with, with anything you want. So for example, we can go into something like minimum log level where we have non-Boolean variants. These are string variants. And we could try something different. So the default resolution, we could do a, a distribution where let's go 25 across the board. Right, you can see the beautiful rainbow of variant allocation here on the right. Or let's um, let's say instead of a distribution model, we could go to a variant. And in this case, we can completely override the options. So in, for example, like if we look at the selection here, we don't have a trace. So we can come in here and just put in a custom variant. And now you'll see that the default resolution is, being, is serving up a custom variant called trace. And you can see everyone here gets the uh, the kind of salmon deep fuchsia color. And at any point, you can come back in here to your overview. You can either remove all of the rules. Again, that'll kind of reset you back to a blank slate, or you can even just reset your entire sample data. And that'll move you back to the default configuration that I provide when you log in for the first time. And uh, you can add your own feature flags. The UI for this is not so great. I mean, none of this UI is great. I mostly just wanted to get all of this working uh, before I maybe move to a, a better, more robust interface. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be some value here when I'm done. And hopefully this will help give a kind of a visceral, hands-on experience along with the, uh, the stuff that I'm illustrating in my Feature Flags book.